Hello and welcome to the Kilt and EWF demo for the Dina project. In this demo I will generate a key pair on the Oli box with the help of the Oli crypto chip. I will let the box generate a DID. I will issue a credential to the box and send it to the EWF app for verification and further processing. The Oli box is connected to the inverter of a solar panel and it communicates through the WAN. In front of you, you can see on the left our demo client with which we can try out kill the use cases. On the top right, you see a terminal window which I will use to trigger different things on the Oli box. And on the bottom right, you can see the terminal window which will show the logs of the Oli box. For this demo, I already prepared a C type, which is a schema for our credential we want to issue and a delegation hierarchy where a so-called agency invited the installer, which we will use to issue the credential, to its delegation hierarchy. This has the advantage that every participant in the system only has to trust the root and not each and every installer. Now I will let the box generate a key pair. For that, I just have to issue a REST API command. You can already see that a new identity in form of a private public key pair was generated and stored on the box. I can use this address now to give it some tokens so that the box in the next step can register a DID. Now I will instruct the box to register its DID on the blockchain. The box successfully registered um, itself on the chain and now has a DID. Both the generating of the key pair and registering of the DID should happen at the manufacturer's side. Now that we have the DID of the box, we can add it as a contact to the demo client to issue a credential in the next step. Okay, as an installer, to issue a credential, we first have to submit our terms to the box. For that, we will select the C type we previously created and send a prefilled claim to the box. As name, I will enter Oli because this is a credential for an Oli box. This is just example data uh, and in the field it might be completely different. I will leave the device specific information blank because they will be filled in automatically by the box. As a delegation, I will select our delegation we got from the agency. I will send it to the box. The box received the message, it verified that the CTAP matches and the, it knows the delegation route and sent back a message for requesting an attestation. Here you can see that it filled in the device specific information. If as an installer I'm now happy with all this information, I can attest this claim which will anchor it on the blockchain. We can use a blockchain explorer to have a look. Here we can see an attestation was created, the CTAP hash, the claim hash and the delegation node ID, but no private concerning information is stored on the blockchain as you can see. The box also already um, received this attestation, it gives out the same information we see here on the blockchain checks that the intercession matches the previous request, stores the credential on the box, and then sends it to the EWF app as a verifiable credential. To summarize, a key pair was generated from the box and was stored encrypted on this box.
A DID was generated and registered on the blockchain, and a credential was issued, was stored on the box, and is anchored on the blockchain. In the end, this credential was sent from the box to the EWF app. Hello! I would like to now demonstrate how an Oli Box device, which is registered with our Energy Web dashboard, can receive Energy Web role credentials to allow it to participate in use cases such as flexibility and green charging. As an administrator, I have signed into the dashboard. In this case, I am acting as a transmission system operator to approve an Oli Box device for a flexibility market. The device has already sent the credential with the basic DNIL data to the Energy Web dashboard. These server logs demonstrate this. First, a credential is received by the application REST API server. Then, the issuer's signature is verified. The signature check is performed by leveraging a signature suite provided by KILP with a popular linked data proof verification library. Next, a check is performed that the credential issuer is authorized to do so using the KILP delegation tree technology. Finally, the device's did document is retrieved. This is used for messaging with the device. Back in the Energy Web Dashboard, the administrator can view the BMIL credential data from the device details window. The full verifiable credential data can be seen from the Credentials tab. We can see that the credential type array includes BMIL installation credential, and that the data describing the device are shown in the credential subject. The summary of the device's data, including its DID and the BMIL credential data, can be read from the Overview tab. Acting as a transmission system operator, I review the baseline data and decide to approve the device for the flexibility market. Returning to the dashboard main screen, we can see that the device has now been marked as pre-qualified for flex. Let's return to the server logs to examine the verifiable credential exchange process in more detail. First, the credential issuance server sends a proposal of credential terms to the device. The device reviews and accepts the credential proposal and sends an issuance request, also known as an attestation request, back to the server. The issuance server verifies the request, attests the credential, and anchors the attested credential on the blockchain. Finally, the credential is returned to the device for its own storage. In order to view the issued pre-qualification verifiable credential, we can return to the Credentials tab of the Device Details window. There, we can see that an Energy Web Role credential has been added. The device can now present this credential for the prequalification.flex role when they would like to participate in a flexibility market use case.